Hey Google, turn on the bar lights. All right, this is the last episode of the dry bar series. And in this video, we're gonna show you how we made these cabinets and floating shelves. I started off by breaking down some three quarter inch plywood into all the different segments that I would need to make each cabinet. Then it was on to putting pocket holes in the back and top and bottom pieces. I didn't put pocket holes on the side pieces because I didn't want the chance of them being exposed if I wasn't able to hide them just right. And to do all these pocket holes, I use my Armor Tools Auto Jig. I absolutely love this thing, so I'll throw a link in the bottom for you if you wanna pick one up yourself. Um, this thing is worth every penny, and for what it's worth, this video is in no way sponsored by Armor Tools. So there's that. The assembly of this was a little annoying just because it was so large, but it was really pretty easy. You're basically putting five sides of a box all together and it's just the front piece where the door is going to be that is open. So it actually holds its shape pretty well. Now one thing I will mention is the top piece I mounted right up flush with the top of the sides in the back. But the bottom piece, I actually recessed it a little bit from the bottom. That way I could go ahead and hide my under cabinet lighting. On to making the face frames. So for the face frames, I used 5 8 inch poplar and I pretty much show you every step of the process. So I'll just let you watch the video. After a quick round of sanding, it was time to bring in the professionals for the paint job. Let's go. Meanwhile, while the professionals are doing the paint job, I am starting on the doors. And by the way, for those that haven't watched some of the videos on the channel before by professionals when it comes to painting, I am in fact talking about my wife. So anyway, the doors. The doors are going to be shaker style doors to go with the rest of the dry bar and that's kind of the theme throughout the house. Um, if you watched the last video, I actually did a whole video on how to make these shaker style doors and I used a router and a table saw to do all the cuts. This time, because I only had two doors to make, I went ahead and just used a table saw for everything, so let me show you what I kind of did here. I started off by cutting the groove for the center panel on all the perimeter pieces exactly how I did last time using the table saw. I then kind of lined up two pieces like you see here, and I marked how deep this groove was. The idea is I'm going to cut up to this line, and that way the tongue that I cut is going to fill the entire space of that groove. I then set the height of my table saw blade just kissing this groove, that way when I cut the tongue that I'm about to, it'll perfectly line up with these grooves. I then set my fence to where whenever I would cut all these pieces, the tongue depth was very repeatable and the exact same on all the pieces. Now that everything was set up, I went ahead and cut one of these tongues and checked for fitment. So I pretty much eliminated all the gap and it's nice and flush and fits nice and tight. So I think we're good with that and we will cut all of the tenons. After I cut the center panel out of a piece of 8th inch utility panel, I then glued everything up just like I did in the last video. If you want to check out the video where I detailed how to make these shaker style doors, 
Go ahead and click the link that should be popping up at the top of the screen now. After doing a little bit of cleanup of the dry glue, giving them a quick round over on all the edges to give them a nice shadow line against the cabinets, and giving them a light sanding, it was time to call the professionals back in for the paint job. Now we wanted to make sure we had plenty of flexibility for where we could put the shelves, so I used my Craig shelf pin jig to put a ton of holes on the sides of both cabinets so that we could adjust the shelves wherever we wanted. So we're finally ready to install these things and if you recall we're putting these in our dining room above the dry bar and um, this used to be an exterior facing wall that has been uh, converted and add on to the dining room so it has these little ribs that go up the wall like you see here and so I actually need to cut sections of these ribs out in order to fit the cabinets flat up against the wall. So because there's absolutely no such thing as a house that has perfectly square walls, we did have to do some funny things such as put this piece of plywood up to shim out this pillar in the corner because that pillar actually doesn't go straight up and down, it's at a slight angle. So um, that cabinet would not sit flush up against it. So we put this little piece of plywood there to help out. The nice thing about those little ribs on the wall is after we cut them, it was just enough that we could actually rest the back of these cabinets on and you just kind of had to hold it tight to the wall. You didn't actually have to hold it up. Now I cut and painted a couple extra pieces of three quarter inch plywood that you see here that I kind of used as reinforcement for where I anchored the cabinets up at the very top of the wall. I made the shelves out of three quarter inch melamine because it was cheap and easy. And then I did install some crown molding around the top of the cabinets because a lot of the other cabinetry in the house has crown molding around the top. So I went ahead and matched and got the best I could the exact same profile. Um, and I am by no means a crown molding expert. I had to Google a whole bunch of crown molding videos to figure it out. Um, but I will have some shorts, uh, YouTube shorts coming out here soon that kind of show some funky stuff I had to work around. Now I had some dimensionalized pieces of pecan from the exact same tree that the countertop of the dry bar was cut from. So I decided this was the perfect material to use for the floating shelves. Now when I say dimensionalized, I mean they were very roughly cut to dimensional board. So I started off by cutting it all to the lengths that I would need for the shelves. And then I went through all the process of milling it down into actual boards that I could use. None of these boards had a flat side to them, so I started off by laying them out on a piece of flat OSB that I had, shimming them up so they don't rock, and then I would run this through the planer to get one good flat reference side to plane the other side from. Once I was done planing down all the boards to the same thickness, I then used the exact same OSB that I was using to push them through the planer, and I installed this little stop on the end that I could put the boards right up against. I could barely hang them over the edge of the OSB, which was perfectly square, and then I could ride the OSB along the fence and push the piece of pecan through to give it a perfectly straight edge on the table saw. Now 
I'm making two shelves above the dry bar, but I need two pieces of this pecan in order to make one shelf. And so with those four pieces, two of them, I left a natural edge on the front because I wanted there to be a natural edge exposed at the front side of the dry bar. And this would complement the dry bar itself, which has a natural edge exposed at the front as well. So all sides of these four pieces, except for the two natural edges, I went ahead and ripped a dado through them. And this was gonna give me a spot to insert a piece of filler wood to actually help bind and glue the two pieces together, as well as put a groove at the very back of the wall to run wires through for under cabinet lighting. finish on these shelves I finished them just like I did the dry bar countertop with Rubio mono coat natural this is an awesome product it really makes the colors of this spalted pecan really pop just look at how it just brings out all this color as I finish these To install the shelves, I had to notch these ribs again just like I had to do for the cabinets. Now the shelves themselves are actually going to be anchored to the cabinets, not to the back wall. So I drilled a couple holes in the side of the cabinets to actually anchor these in whenever I installed them. I then held the shelves perfectly in place and Lauren came by with an awl and through the holes that we put in the cabinet, she put a little indentation on the ends of the shelves for me to be able to put a nut cert in to anchor these. By the way, in case you haven't noticed, we're doing a lot of this work inside the house, so what you're seeing here is a domesticated version of a shop vac, aka a household vacuum cleaner. Because this pecan is such a hard wood and it is kind of brittle, I didn't want the chance of this uh, wood shelf splitting. So I put a little finishing paste wax on the threads of the nut cert, and then as I threaded it in, I would thread it in about one, one and a half turns, then I would back it out a little bit and then keep repeating that until I got it fully inset. All right, so if you remember that groove that I cut in the back of the top shelf, that's for these lights. And so I actually picked these up like two years ago. I've been waiting for a project to use them and I think they're gonna work out perfect for this. So the way it works, you have actually like all these modular pieces. And so the power plugs into this little block and this little block has four ports, which each one of these lights can plug into. And then you can power all these lights however many you plug into this little block. So I can have up to four on each one. I have two sets of these. So the plan is to run lights from the outlet over to the other cabinet, down to the bottom, and I'll have two lights on the bottom. I'm gonna try to put one light in the middle back of the bottom shelf, and it'll kind of shine upward, just giving a little light there. And then on this other cabinet, I'll actually come all the way down and have two lights on the bottom as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and run all the cables, and then we'll be able to install the shelves. As you might have noticed from the introduction, we can actually use voice commands to turn on and off the lights. And that's because we installed a smart home outlet, which you can see right here. And I talked briefly about how to do this in one of the previous videos of this series.
At this point, the paint on the doors was good and dry, so we got them set up for the hardware, which we were installing the concealed hinges, European style hinges. So I used this Craig concealed hinge jig, which worked like a charm to get all the holes just right for those concealed hinges. And at this point, it was really just time for the finishing touches. So as you may recall, we set out on this project because we had a closet in our dining room and we wanted to convert it to a dry bar to make it more useful. We had some contractors give us some quotes and they were quoting around $2,500 without the beverage fridge. Well, we thought that was ridiculous and we could do a lot better than that with the beverage fridge. So we set out to do $2,500 fully made dry bar with the beverage fridge. And I've detailed all the costs of this entire project on the screen here. And as you can see, we met our budget and have a very nice beverage fridge with it. And I think another thing to consider is the amount of customization we got from the slab countertop with the bow tie inlays to the spice rack style drawers. I mean, this is stuff that you would not have gotten from a contractor. So with that, I would say this project was 100% worth the time and effort. And until next time, take a chance and build something. Hey Google, turn off the bar lights.